recording. All right, hello everyone. Um, I'll make my usual opening statement that we are the Amherst Energy and Climate Action Committee. And we were organized to guide the town in meeting its climate mitigation and resilience goals. So those goals and the plan for getting there are adopted from the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan or CARP, which was accepted by the town council in 2021. Um, it took 2016 as its base year and called for a 25% reduction in carbon emissions by 2025 and 50% by 2030 um, and carbon neutrality by 2050. So this committee has two primary functions, one to advise the town council and recommend or propose policies or actions that will help us meet those climate goals, and two, to promote a just, equitable, and speedy climate response through outreach and engagement of the town and local stakeholders. And with that, let's first of all figure out who's taking notes today. Um, now who did it last time? I know I haven't been here for a while, so I'm happy to do it unless that messes up the order. Um, I don't think it would mess up the order too badly, but let's see who was. Michael did it last time. And then, so, so Tony, you want to do it today then? And Laura, if you're around next time, you do it next time? Or Steve, actually, well, Steve just did it, didn't he? Hmm. I'm happy to do it. Uh, okay, so, but next time, if we keep going down the list, it's it's Tony's turn. Okay. All right. But of course, we haven't really been going down the list, so <laughs> I'll take, we've been trying to, but somehow we skip around a lot. Um, all right, so let's have Tony do it today. Thank you, Tony. Um, all right, so the first item of business is always to review the minutes from the last meeting and vote to accept them or not. So I can share my screen. I have them here. ECAC minutes from the 17th. guys where I can see you again. All right, so these were our minutes from last time. Tony told us about an Elevate group. Some plans there. Effort in Northampton to put together an energy coach program. I'll just page down if anybody needs more time or a larger screen, a larger print, let me know. I can make it a little bit bigger. And we've got some nice reflections on ECAC membership from Jesse and Dwayne. Lots of exciting stuff going on at the town and local level. I never sent in my photo biking essay because the very next day signs went up on Pelham Road and they cut the bushes in front of the bicycle sign. So I don't know if you had anything to do with that, Stephanie, <laughs> or if somebody watched the uh, <laughs> video of the meeting. <laughs> you just manifested that, Lori, is all. <laughs> I still have to send in pictures of what the roadway looks like because that's still pretty dangerous, but that's a slightly different essay than I had planned. <laughs> Any um, move to accept minutes? I Yes, I will move to accept the minutes. And I'll second it. Thank you, Steve and Don. Let me stop sharing. Hey, in no particular order, Allison 
Yes. Roof. Yes. Goldner. Yes. McElrath. Yes. Drucker. Upstein. Okay. Minutes are approved. Okay. And we have no attendees from the public. So no public comment. Um, hmm. So let's go on to the rest of the agenda. Um, education and outreach. So how's PACE going, Don, anymore? Uh, I, have, I have nothing new to add with PACE, although at the end of the last minutes, um, I, I, I was in Damascus. This is not related to PACE. This is just in related to the time I spent in Damascotta, Maine. And they, I, they moved, they had two um, community climate workshops the town was sponsoring. One, two weeks before I got there, one that was supposed to be the week I was there, but they kicked it over to a later week. Um, I did speak with the town officials and I'm going to follow up with them, but they were a tremendous success. And I'd like to find out exactly what they did and how it worked out um because they said it was a it was a tremendous success there were so many people interested they had two different workshops on the same month so i will follow up on that i we're going to get to that at the end of the notes but i just thought i would bring it up now okay that's really that's great this so i'm sorry i missed something the workshops were on specifically on climate uh, they were community climate workshops as to what okay. individuals in the community could do, could do. further the um non the, the decarbonization goals okay that sounds um, very interesting and i'd love to hear more about that so you're going to talk more about that at the end well at the next meeting at the next meeting okay great yep. great great so let's make sure we put that on the agenda for the next meeting um uh tony you got any more Oh, actually, I should ask first, is there anything else about Pace, Stephanie, or anyone else? Any more news? No, so that falls to me for not following up with okay. Stephanie to try to put together an educational series okay. for us. But that's that's on me, not Stephanie. So, uh, Okay, coordination with local groups. Tony, any updates or anything we should know? Um. No real updates. I do. I have been in contact with Michael Ash, the leader that I spoke of. Right. Uh, and but I was out of state and he's now out of state. But we do plan on coordinating once he gets back. Um, and once we do that, I will have more to update you on. OK, I know Michael Ash. I didn't realize that was the Michael you were talking about somehow yes. last time. And I just need to fix something on my screen here. Sorry. Every now and then, one note cursor sort of goes wacky, and I have to reboot it so I can continue to take notes. I always take some of my own notes. Um, OK, in that case, um, let's go on to heat pumps. OK, so I don't, I don't know, do I have, I think the only thing that, uh, I, I guess, Stephanie, I could ask you to give a little bit of an update on the RFP to the extent you can. Well, we're well beyond the RFP at this yeah. point. Um, right. We had two proposals. Remember, one of them was not eligible. Uh, the other um, consultant we have been in touch with, we've had some um, tweaking of their budget. And right now it's sitting with the town manager. Um, I've made a recommendation that we go with them and create a contract. Uh, we haven't, I've, I'm going to try to touch base uh, with him about that again, but um, he hasn't responded quite yet to my forwarding it and my recommendations. So I'm hoping that we will be able to move that forward within the next week or two. Okay, good. So you got you got what you needed from negotiating with um, company. Yeah, I think so. Excellent. Good. Okay. Cool. Um, I don't think I have anything to add to that. Um, I'll have some reports later uh, on ECAC member updates. Um, I do have something to say about heat pumps, but I don't know if this is the right time to say it or not. Go ahead. Um, 
have you all been connect uh, reached out to by hold on let me find it again i had it open um laminar H hannah oh no not hannah Hannon Rhodes of Laminar Collective. Hannon Rhodes, H A N O N. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, what are they? That sounds vaguely familiar. But yes, it should, Lori. <laughs> why does it sound familiar? Sorry. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I remember. Now yeah. I remember. Yes, yes. Laminar Collective. Yeah, yeah, they're doing really cool stuff. Yes. But not, okay. um, right. I, I, but yeah, we've heard from them. I guess that's all I want to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't, I didn't recognize Hannon Rhodes, Laminar Collective. I, I know who they are. Yes. Okay. So Christine Lindstrom put them in touch with me. I said that I was probably not the right person to talk to. Um, but if you all have already talked to them, then I just will leave it. Only initially but if there's more that they want to follow up with you can certainly put them in touch with me okay or, maybe i'll maybe i'll do that yeah because if there's something specific that they're wanting to talk to us about that i'd be interested in having a conversation with them okay should i just cc you in on this response yep yeah. sure okay right You're right Uh, okay. I have not heard anything more from climate resilient schools, possibly because school is out. <laughs> so I will keep I also school oh, related. I also saw something posted yesterday. Maybe this can be a future agenda item. Hold on, let me pull it up here. Um, green school works program from mass clean energy center is that on anybody's radar. No, that's one I haven't heard of. So I think it's new. Um, I can send you this link, Stephanie. It looks like it's going to be some provide. It says financial support for K to twelve public schools or districts to install or maintain clean energy infrastructure. Um, so it could be a funding mechanism. Cool. Um, They're doing a stakeholder engagement this summer, prioritizing the plan in the fall, and then they won't start doing applications for until the winter. Yeah, send it to me. I mean, typically what I've been doing is forwarding that to the schools because they tend to like to do their own applications and grant funding opportunities. Um, so I can share, but typically I'm not the one to do that for them. But you can send it to me. I'll okay. make sure the right people get it. I, I'd be curious to have the link to um, Laura. Just go ahead and send it. I've been trying to keep track of stuff like that, but there's a lot of it and it keeps changing. Um, okay, anything else for schools? Not then. How about um, residential information gathering, Steve? Any more on that front? This is the nothing new. This was a new idea, and it was inspired by a news story I read on Ooh, one right. of my feeds. And the town of Canton, New York. They had sent out a survey throughout the town to ask residents what they have done for their decarbonization efforts. Um, so they had a fairly simple survey. It was asking if they had purchased a new electric vehicle or a plug-in hybrid. Had they installed a heat pump? Um, had they signed up for a local CCA, Community Choice Aggregation? And it was pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple survey. What struck me about it is that you know, many of these things we don't know for Amherst, how many people have installed heat pumps or have electric vehicles. So this could be useful information. Um, 
Yeah. Us to know. I think it's also useful from what I've read is if neighbors, if people know their neighbors have installed heat pumps, they're much more likely to install them themselves. Um, so this may be something maybe not immediately, but in the near future, um, perhaps associated with the CCA, as promoting the CCA in the, in the fall, it may be worthwhile thinking about doing a survey so we could collect what folks have done in Amherst and then sort of promote that and encourage people who haven't yet done any of these decarbonization efforts that might might encourage them to do so. I'm, I'm sitting here imagining a, a survey that is connected to a map and with people's permission, putting little dots for, you know, mm. green dot for EV, red dot for a heat pump, you know, all over the map for where things are being done. And also a place for folks to ask you know, they want to talk to somebody about about energy coaching, about about mass save, about you know, and then um, see if we can find a few volunteers to respond to stuff like that. Um, if we get overwhelmed, it would be great. <laughs> you know, um, I would I would certainly do it, and I think I can dig up one or two others maybe from the from the Heat Smart Alliance who might be willing to do that from the area. Yeah, I think that that sounds useful. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, I wonder what it would take to connect something like that to the dashboard, Stephanie. Is that something that can be integrated into? Oh yeah, that's, I mean, that's partly what the dashboard, while you're all talking, I'm thinking. So, yeah. and I was thinking the dashboard, you know, that's in fact, we, I'll give in, during my staff updates, I'll talk a little more about this. Cause oh, I okay. actually have some thoughts about this as well that I'll share. I think that would be really cool. And it would also give us an easy place. You know, we've been doing stuff informally at Sustainability Festival. I still have copies of the giant poster board, the, uh, you know, big sheets of paper with the different color dots on them for different things people have done and what they are interested in doing. And, and um, it would be interesting to make that a more formal, you know, to keep that information somewhere. And that would be a way to do it and advertise it. And also give folks a chance, you know, I've had a couple people I still have that too. I have one or two emails that people wanted to be on the ECAC distribution list, whatever that means. And all I could do is tell them, oh, okay, go to the website and look for our minutes. Um, but it might be nice if we as ECAC, you know, put out a periodic, just a paragraph or two about what we're thinking about this month. I would be willing to write something and send it to a distribution list if people wanted to, um, if people wanted to do that. And it also gives us a place to you know, there's all sorts of um, statewide and local actions, just a, a place where we could write to people to ask for their support for some state legislation or some uh, funding, you know, some some outside of Amherst thing that, that needs our attention that would ultimately affect Amherst, right? Some legislation or something that needs our support. Um, I'm sorry, I was laughing not because of what I was saying, but because the my cat just stuck her nails in my toe and it was better than sleep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, all right, sorry. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Thanks for bringing that to our attention, Steve. I, I, that's a pretty neat little dashboard. Um, anything else in the way of education and outreach? I guess I could throw this point under this topic. Um, so I saw yesterday, maybe, on LinkedIn, a post from CET about their work with small businesses. Um, and I'll send the link over email or send the link to Stephanie so she can send it over email. But basically, they offer no cost assessments for small businesses. And they had like an interview with um, Douglas Thayer, who I'm pretty sure is based in Amherst or in Leverett. He's a woodworker. Um, but it just got me thinking that maybe there's a opportunity here to engage with CET and see if we can't partner with them to do some outreach for Amherst small businesses on their on what CET offers and 
maybe even combine that with pace. Um, so anyway, I've reached out to Ashley, who's this president of CT, just to see like, hey, would there be any room to partner on this? Like, do you have a list of company businesses that you're already engaging with or, um, but anyway, I just thought that that could be an interesting little project for us if there's anything there, there. So I'm thinking that that sort of thing will probably be part of the heat pump program as well. No, Stephanie? Or... I thought that was for residents. I... Oh, you're on mute. You're muted, you're muted Stephanie. Yeah, when we haven't announced our heat pump provider and everything yet. So when we do, we'll try to, you know, maybe this is an additional thing that we can reach out about. Um, we haven't signed our contract yet, so we can't announce who we're working with. Um, but yeah, Laura, this sounds really cool. And I think um, I'm sure, you know, we've we've tried to do programming with small businesses in the past and it's always been super, super challenging. And we even work with, you know, we've worked directly with the bid, with the chamber. I don't know why, like we've had breakfasts where we've shared information, the utilities used to offer, and I'm sure this is a similar kind of thing. The utilities offered free support um, for energy efficiency, projects. And, and again, this was a while ago, but it's just always been really super hard to engage the business community. I don't know why. Mm. Mm. Does our heat pump program cover commercial? I thought it was a residential program. It's a residential program, but I think, um, I think if businesses approached us, I don't think we would say no to including them, you know, especially small businesses. I don't think there's any large businesses that would. So most of what we have is small. And I'm sure if they do want to participate, but the priority is really residential. Okay. So it just, I think it depends on the response rate that we get from the residential sector. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll, I'll maybe just add this to the agenda for me to update on folks on, and I'll see if I hear anything back from them. Um, it could even be a situation where we say, you know, we, reached out to X number of local businesses about this program and none of them respond <laughs> like, you know, yeah. just to show that we're taking some action. Um, I don't think this is specific to heat. I, so I could see it working in tandem with the heat pump program. Right. This is more of like a, you know, kind of like a energy, like in this example that they're giving, it, it was about weatherization of this guy's workshop. Right. So, you know, energy costs are so high, you would think that if we lead with that, there would be desire to at least if there are no cost or low cost solutions for these businesses to reduce their energy costs. Um, so I'll, I'll, you can add that to my list and I will update folks next time. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So that, that's funded through mass save. Is it Laura? the work they're doing with, presumably with um, regional I'm, businesses? I'm not sure. I will find out. I know CT used to be a mass save provider, but I'm not sure that they are anymore. They are still. They are still? Okay. They're so they working specifically with the Berkshire gas customers. For, um, for residential heat pump programs, I know. Um, and other mass save, I think, you know, they're specifically working with their mass save program with Mm -hmm. Berkshire Gas, like that's who they're the they're the vendor for Berkshire Gas, is what I'm trying to say. Right. Okay. Any other education outreach items that people want to bring up new for next time? In that case, let's go on to our advisory and support mission. So. Um, Steve, you're on again for the, uh, any new news or any new input for the rental efficiency bylaw and the new method for collecting information by inspection? No new information on that. Okay. Is that worth leaving on the agenda? We seem to have reached a conclusion. Um, Maybe just following up on what happens with that information or where it gets collected or- Right, I guess, 
it's useful to leave it on the agenda, but I guess I'm, my understanding is that as the inspection department starts doing inspections, that information will slowly accumulate. Where will it go? Well, I don't, that's a good question. <laughs> Stephanie, do you have any idea how that would work? I I mean, typically, like, it's just probably going to be added in our munis files somewhere, but I can find out. I'll ask. If we can't yeah. ask, it doesn't I, do the I guess it's going to be a year or two before there's some data on some rental properties. So it's, it, it'll get there, but it might take several years before there's a significant percentage of the rental properties have been inspected. How many rental properties do they inspect every month? I don't know what the number is, but they're sort of breaking it down to like a certain percentage, um, you know, over, over time, like they'll, they're not, they're not obviously inspecting every single property each year. And I, do, I can't remember, I think we knew at the last meeting what the turnover rate was, but I don't remember off the top of my head right now, but I can find out. But like Steve said, you know, it's going to, you're going to have to wait at least a year, if not more, to get some meaningful data. Okay, so we should certainly revisit this next summer to see if we have data. And meanwhile, just trying to figure out how to, I guess the remaining question for now is where that data is going to go. So Maybe that's something, Stephanie, to just ask about, see if we can get some sort of an answer to. Yep, I made a note. Do we know what is the, because I've just noticed anecdotally, like it seems like a lot of the rental properties in town have been for sale or are being sold, or some mm -hmm. of them at least. Um, Like the one across the street from the Emily Dickinson or like Catacorder Emily Dickinson just was sold it, it, what happens when is there an inspection that happens at that point is there any leverage points that we have there before it gets transferred and re-rented leverage points for can you clarify laura so yeah so this is interesting because if it's been sold it'll be on the multiple listing site right and that always tells you what sort of heat it uses um it has quite a lot of information about about the building structure yeah so like that could be an example if, if that information is there then maybe we just need to collect that information and then we can target the owner for the heat pump program or for some other system weatherization system try to reach out to them so for example i wonder if it would be as simple as doing a zillow search I might I might try to make this and report back next time. <laughs> See what I can find out. Um, I won't do it now, but it's very easy to do a Zillow search and look stuff like that up. That might be a bit of a needle in the haystack. You would just catch whatever rental properties, if they're listed as rental properties, whatever they are oh, yeah. at the moment. And if, if you did it frequent enough yeah. for over a year, you might get them i i don't remember i don't think that uh own property ownership triggered an automatic inspection a physical inspection of the property i don't think that's the case okay yeah that was kind of my question i guess right um i think that they will try to do the inspections over in sort of over several years get to all of the rental registered rental properties in town. And like Stephanie, I, I, at one point, I think I knew that they were gonna to try to do it over some number of years and I can't remember what that number is. Um, hmm. So I think for now, that's probably, we just have to sit tight and wait unless we come up for a need for better data, then we might think about how we could collect that data more efficiently. So this is, 
So this is pretty good. I just did a quick search and Zillow shows multifamily and apartments, one, two, three, four, about, about 25, it looks like offhand that have sold recently, oh. maybe 30. And all of them have, have information. So this, this could be really interesting to do. I might, hmm. I might be doing this for next time and making a little chart. <laughs> so I and mean, recently is usually in the last two or three years. So there may have been upgrades to some of these. I didn't look for the ones that are currently for sale. Those will also be on here. That might be more current. Um, but if it's sold any time in the last couple of years, it'll be on Zillow. At any rate, that's interesting. It's not, it's not as small a, there has been a lot of property for sale. There's been a lot of turnover. Um, and I think because rent skyrocketed, so all of these apartment complexes are, are big money makers now, unfortunately. <laughs> um, interesting. They're big money makers. Why are the owner exist the current owner selling their properties? <laughs> because they can cash out and get a lot of money. <laughs> ah. It's you know, they that's apartment owners are usually in it. I have uh, you know, they're <laughs> landlords, they're in it for for making money. So they invest it somewhere else. They sell high, buy, you know, buy low, sell high. It's an investment. Um so things things move around a lot. I think I mean that's at least what I'm seeing. That yeah. I didn't know if it had something to do with like the new because it's a new real realtor company too, right? Like it, uh, William. Well, Jones seems to have disappeared. Yeah, I think they got bought by this other company. Okay. So I don't know if they own some of them, and they're like, I don't know. Anyway, it just mm -hmm. seems like there's a big. Yeah. Don't know. Move happening of some sort. Yeah, a lot of the buildings that are multifamily, remember, are are just old houses that have been converted to two or three apartments, right? So a lot of the things on that list were old houses. There were also some big apartment complexes. Um, all right. Interesting. Uh, should we go on? Solar, any updates on solar? I guess Steve, solar bylaw. I have no real updates. I did tune in to the, um, was it CRC? Is that the right name? The, the subcommittee of the town council that's been reviewing and sort of trying to rework the solar bylaw. And they were reworking it a week or two, two weeks ago, I guess. Um, I don't know when they're going to be done, and perhaps Stephanie has a better sense as to when they will finish a draft that I understand will then be shared with different town departments and, and committees, including ECAC. Okay. Yeah, for clarification, all that's been happening to this point is just trying to get a working draft. Um, there was just initial review of what was included in the original uh, draft that was submitted by the Solar Bylaw Working Group. And that's been pretty somewhat heavily edited, I think, at this point. Um, and there, what, what originally happened was sort of breaking it out into different components. Um, so I think there's still, though, a question of like what we were left with. Were there things that some committee members wanted to be inserted back into the draft and then other things other committee members felt should come out of the draft they're still having that conversation so i don't think they're even at a at a final draft yet so i would assume it might take another few meetings to at least get to that point and um, certainly when they're done there will be a draft that will be submitted and circulated to um, some department heads, committees, you all will be included in that. I've requested that it, you know, ensure that it comes to you as well. So there will be other folks reviewing and making recommendations back to the committee. But the idea is to work with what they have and to not revisit, well, I, I don't know. Um, I think this is the intent anyway of the Solar Bylaw Working Group is that we're, you know, 
a lot of things got vetted within the solar bylaw working groups. The hope is that they're not going back and having a lot of the same conversations again. They work with the draft that they have and not, we're not hoping to sort of reopen and rehash the same issues. They should be working with what the solar bylaw work group, working group sort of came to, hopefully. That, yeah, that's my understanding. But having watched several of these meetings, there are times where they they move into starting to question this decision or that decision that was made by the Solar Bylaw Working Group. It may be a, a buffer distance or some other issue. And there's sometimes they kind of move into conversation as to whether that was a wise decision or not. Um, so it's a little bit frustrating to watch because you it, I, I don't know if I should comment on some of those issues like a buffer distance or I think they're just they're supposed to be just kind of organizing it and separating it and eliminating redundancies without changing the intent. Mm -hmm. um, but at times the counselors start to have discussed changing such things um, di different from what the solar bylaw working group presented. So I guess we'll just have to wait to see when we get the document, we can compare it to what the Solar Bylaw Working Group had. And if there's any big changes that were made and we feel like they weren't made with good justification, that those are issues that we can raise at that time. And again, it's going before staff as well. So staff, including myself, because I was involved in the process, but I still have not made my final recommendations. There are certainly things that I think need to be addressed. I, I, I am like one of them was the stormwater section, which I think has already at least been covered at the last meeting that they're just going to refer to the existing solar bylaw. I mean, I'm sorry, stormwater bylaw and not try to create some of their own recommendations that didn't totally make sense because it was sort of very cherry picked and didn't. Yeah, it just would have led people down a rabbit hole, I think. So, um, so anyway, but that was just one piece that I was able to actually provide a specific recommendation for, but I still haven't reviewed the whole thing myself. So you think at least a couple more meetings for them to sort of work through it? I would think so. Seems like think it to me too. Yeah, I think at least a couple more. And um, Councillor Henneke was not at the last meeting and she typically has a lot of thought about you know, about these documents. And so I think without her um, input and, you know, there there may be some more thoughts that she has even on what was last reviewed and commented on. So she, you know, there may be revisiting some of those things again. So yeah, I think there are at least a few meetings out at least. All right, so when that comes back, we will have a look at it. But until then, I appreciate getting updates, Steve, thanks. So next on the agenda is transportation. Tony? I have no updates on that. However, you were talking last meeting about a road um, yeah. <laughs> that you bike on. Uh, I forgot the name of it, however, if you could provide that to me, I can make sure that I bring that to their attention. Yeah, Pelham Road at the corner with Southeast Street, Northeast Southeast Street. It's uh, it's also called, is it Main Street in town? It's not Route 9, it's the other one. I think it's Main Street. Um, but at, where it crosses Route uh, Southeast Street, it's just a disaster. It The road is so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> So yeah, so if that was your doing last time, I don't know. Like I say, the signs at least got put up, and the bush in front of the in front of the bicycle, the only bicycle sign anywhere near that intersection, got cleared away. Um, I'll also so say I don't know if this is necessarily transportation, but the bikes, um, I forget what they're called, should be up pretty soon, up and running pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, the town bikes. Um, so, and I know that they're putting more stations. Um, especially around the colleges and universities. So hopefully that provides a little bit more carbon reduction and also accessibility for its users. That would be great. That would be great. Thanks, Tony. Um, okay, I have a couple of, if we're done with transportation, anyone else? 
Um, okay, I have some regional and state policy notes that I wanted to mention. Uh, so one of the things I did since the last meeting is attended an MCAN monthly meeting at the Massachusetts Climate Action Network. And they've been doing a lot of the lobbying for climate bills in this state Congress, which ends, I think this week, I hope it's not already over because I haven't heard from them what happened. Um, as, of, uh, as of July, uh, a couple weeks ago, um, there had been a Senate bill that they were pretty happy with so at 2829, that had some really good things requiring gas companies to plan for orderly decommissioning. Yes. However, it left out a lot, including crucial amendments around biomass and, oh, no, sorry, those were included. Uh, it left out, uh, blind, had blind spots around environmental justice and workers' rights. So it left out a lot of the environmental and social justice parts. Um, the key things they were looking for are that uh, workers in the gas system are somehow taken care of, given good retirement packages or retrained to work on renewables. Um, and that uh, as we build these new networks or transition gas to, for example, geothermal, um, fair labor law and prevailing wages are included in the package for workers. So those were the two top asks of the AFL-CIO and they were left out. Um, for the justice side, air quality, both indoor and outdoor uh, testing was taken out. Um, other uh, citing issues about uplifting communities that are disproportionately affected by in the past. Um, so there were a lot of social justice, like I said, social and environmental justice things that were left out. There were a lot of good things in the bill they were hoping that it would, some of them would be put back in in reconciliation with the house. And I was expecting to get, um, to get notices from them indicating actions they wanted citizens to take, to lobby for this or that, but I never got anything, which worries me. And I couldn't find an update when I looked, there should be an update at this point and I haven't been able to find it. What happened to the house bill? Are they gonna actually vote on it? This Congress ends and then they have to start over again. <laughs> it ends this month sometime. So if they don't get this bill in, we're sort of in trouble. Um, and not everybody is on the side of getting this bill through, including some very important folks uh, in the house. So I, it's a little bit, you know, whether or not anything is gonna happen, I, I don't know. I, I've been waiting for an update and haven't gotten it yet, or maybe I missed it but I haven't seen it, so that worries me. Um, just something to be aware of. The stuff that was in the bill is actually really cool. Um, gas companies are required to plan the orderly decommissioning of the pipeline system. Um, gas companies can sell and install geothermal energy. Gas companies can be, their plans for expansion into new territories can be denied if they don't comply with a bunch of different regulations, which is, pretty much everything. <laughs> like don't, don't protect rep freight payers from the cost of stranded assets. Um, if an alternative to gas service is available, so they're not allowed to expand anymore. Um, they can refuse, there's a bunch of things. I won't go through them all. I, I copied them out of the chat um, if anyone's interested. So that's, that's all I got there. Otherwise, I've been continuing to attend Heat Smart Alliance meetings when I can, and I haven't heard anything new about the um, about the uh, uh, Heat Smart, the energy coaching program that will be more than just Northampton. They put me back on their list. There'll be an area-wide energy coaching pro program that they're trying to put in place. Um, mostly Northampton folks participating so far, but I think it'll be bigger than that. I hope it'll be bigger than that. So that's more local. And that's what I have for regional updates. Anyone else have anything to add? Looks like we're going to get another big thunderstorm here. Mm -hmm.
Um, all right, if no more on that, then uh, Laura, you got any more input on the network geothermal? Stuff I think I think that well Berkshire Gas is still not participating in any of this right, but hopefully they will if this legislation goes through. Um yeah I have no knowledge on Berkshire Gas. Um, Eversource has been the is the is the um, company that's been doing the trend the transition to geothermal. No Eversource and National Grid both have National a pilot Grid. program. Yeah. Um, the only update I have is that the heat, the Kickstart Massachusetts program, which is Massachusetts CEC funding with together with heat, which is heet.org. I was talking about that last year. We decided not to apply, I don't I think. Um, but it was basically grants for feasibility studies for implementing geothermal networks. Um, I was just looking back at this before this meeting and it looks like the grants have been awarded. So there were $10,000 grants awarded to Acton, Ashland, Melrose, New Bedford and Newton. And then 50K grants awarded to a bunch of other Western Mass towns, but Deerfield is one of them. So I think it would be interesting. I don't know. It doesn't say anything about the timing, like when those grants went out, when they're going to be done with anything. But to the extent that we know anybody in the Deerfield town government um, through your connection, Stephanie, um, it may be interesting to learn from them how the process is going in case they do run another round of grants and we might want to apply right. another time. Um, there is other supplemental funding opportunity. There's other funding that comes from Empower Massachusetts and NREL, but I think really like we would need, this would have to be a town run process, not an ECAC run process. So um, I can continue to share what I learn and what I see, but um, and I can reach out to Deerfield and, you know, find out who the contact is and try to connect with them to get info. Uh, the timing, our we just were late. We just missed the opportunity. And quite honestly, we have a lot going on right now. So there's really not, it's me, to be honest. And there's just not capacity right now for me to do anything right now beyond all of the things, which I will give you the update soon next. So. Okay, um, go ahead, Tony. Go ahead with. Oh, did you have, I thought I saw your hand up. No. No, okay. I was just thinking about the Western Mass towns and the funding and the grants. Yep. Sorry. That's okay. Um, are there other, um, oh, did I skip staff updates and go right to ECAC member updates? Or do we go, oh no, regional state policy updates. That's what I was doing. Sorry, I, I got lost in the agenda. Um, okay, and then we're geothermal. Um, I, I wanted to say one other thing that I forgot to mention in regional and state, which is um, MCAN, because I think of the things that were left out of the Senate bill, or at least in part because of that, maybe they saw it coming, um, they have a series of seminars coming up, the first of which is tomorrow evening on um, paths to climate justice. And the first one tomorrow is on, by various leaders in the state government. Um, the first one tomorrow night uh, is on energy affordability. I don't remember who these people are, but this is by Mary Wambui, W-A-M-B-U-I on energy affordability. If anyone's interested, I'll send you the link. Uh, Vernon Walker is next month on climate resilience and climate justice, and September 12th is Hassan Faruqi on green jobs are good jobs. Um, so if anybody's interested in those, I thought um, Tony especially being part of Elevate and, um, you know, I thought folks at UMass actually might be interested in these. 
uh, and the ETI and that sort of thing. So at any rate, um, all right. And with that, I think we are at staff updates, unless there's anything else on advisory and support, any new business we should talk about. Okay, then let's go on to staff updates. Stephanie? Sure. So um, as you know, things I've been talking about for quite some time that were coming are finally are really moving ahead now. And this is going to be one of those times where you know, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. And then all of a sudden we're full guns <laughs> moving forward. Um, so there's a lot happening. So first um, we signed, uh, all three communities signed the CCA contract yesterday. Um, there will be a press release coming out very shortly, but um, uh, we did find a supplier. We have a price that's lower than basic service rate. It'll include 10% renewables. Um, I'll wait for the press release for you to get more information about who that who the supplier is and exactly what the rate is. Um, but just wanted you all to know that that um, did move forward and that will launch officially in November. So between now and then, it's going to be a lot of the education and outreach, which is, again, what we may be really relying on you folks to help support because um, there's going to be a lot of information that has to get out about that. So um, that's really exciting. Um, as I said, Valley Bike, um, Tony mentioned it, but Valley Bike, we are um, relaunching probably. Uh, and again, a press release is coming, but the launch date's in early August. Uh, so that's going to be moving forward. Um, we do the stations that we have. We don't have, I think UMass might have one or two new stations, but um, um, we pretty much have the stations that we had sort of because we don't, I don't think we're expanding the network quite yet because um, we are not opening with all of the bikes that we had. Um, we have a new vendor. So basically they're having to work with the equipment that we had available to us at the end of the the partnership with Bowiegan and not all of the bikes were in reusable condition. So we're at a much decreased capacity for the number of bikes that we'll have. So not all stations will be open again. So we won't be at full capacity this season, but there will still be very much a presence. And I think almost all our stations are gonna be opening again. So that's exciting. Um, but again, that's gonna be in August. Um, let's see, Valley Bike. CCA heat pump program. So the heat pump program, I think I already mentioned, there is a contract that um, has been uh, submitted or suggested that we enter into with to the town manager. It's basically awaiting his approval. He has the authority to accept or reject the proposal. So just waiting on that. Um, my recommendation was that we do accept it. Um, so that hopefully will be moving forward and then we'll be launching that heat pump program. Um, that will be again, a very robust effort that will need, absolutely need this committee's support for involvement in terms of education and outreach with the community and getting people on board, getting people involved, really gonna need your support for that. Um, so, and certainly, Lori, the heat pump coaching that you're referencing, you know, there may be a real opportunity to try to engage with our heat pump program, getting people connected. Um, we're going to hope with the consultant that we're using, we'll do a portion of that. But if we have additional opportunities for coaching, that will hopefully get us even farther. So it's just going to be a really big effort. And there are some challenges, I think, you know, to the um, I, I said I was going to reference this to Steve's point about residential information gathering. There is a group of um, municipalities and specifically di sustainability directors that are actually going to be meeting with Melissa Hoffer at the beginning of August. And I'm now going to be participating in that meeting with her. So um, some of the things that are going to be discussed are sort of how how are utilities using um, you know, the, um, their fees and like, how are they being addressed in programs? Um, some of the 
challenges with the Mass Save program. I think to Steve's point, some of that information um, and data gathering, there's no real ability to gather data for it, precisely what Steve was mentioning in terms of like, what are people doing, um, which would help us. So is, you know, the, I think the idea is to speak with um, Melissa Hoffer about like, are there ways in which the state could support some of these efforts? So, um, so it's all really timely. And I think everything that we're talking about all the other municipalities are talking about too, right? We're all kind of in the same boat of the work that we're doing and how we advance it and, you know, the opportunities that we have and some of the challenges that we have, you know, um, not least of which is kind of staffing and things like doing a heat pump program. But, you know, then we have this mandate that if, um, natural gas is needed as backup that that won't be eligible for rebates or incentives. So that's going to really impact some of the member community, uh, residential participants, because a lot of heat pump providers are recommending in this region that people have some kind of a backup. So these are things that we really have to talk about and sort of work through even as we do our program. So I'm hoping that we'll get some real, um, guidance from Melissa Hoffer when we're, or at least some feedback from her about these kinds of challenges and issues we're facing. So I'm excited about that. And if you have some thoughts about, um, you know, things that you want to raise, I'm happy to bring them up. So just send me an email and it doesn't have to be a coordinated effort by the whole committee. Just send me some thoughts, not a laundry list, <laughs> but please pick your, like your top three things and send them to me and I'll, you know, I think some of them will already be included, but I'm happy to bring up other topics as well. So, so when is this meeting? I don't know yet. I um, just know it's sometime the beginning of August. That's all I know. It's just, um, gonna, I, it's just, it's going to be sustainability directors from around the state. Is that the, not around the state, just a few select, there's just a few communities that have already sort of, um, been talking about some of their issues and I was included um, as one of the folks to, to potentially meet with her. So I'm absolutely jumping at the opportunity. So, um, so it's not like a big wide thing. It's just like, we're trying, I think, keep it manageable. Right. But I definitely had some thoughts around, certainly around heat pumps and the issues that were already brought up and the fact that, you know, this is something that we're going to be challenged with as we launch our program. I'm a bit nervous about it, to be honest. Yeah. So, um, cause I feel like, you know, we get two steps forward and then sometimes three steps back it is how I feel right now. So, um, anyway, I just wanted to share that as well. And I think that's, those are the updates I have for today's meeting. Okay. Interesting. Thanks, Stephanie. Sure. So if anyone has questions they'd like to see answered. Should we discuss this a little bit? Is there anything that is on people's minds that has been a particular issue that you'd want to talk? So Melissa Hoffer is the climate chief in Massachusetts, right? Um, I think their first ever climate chief. That's correct. So I just think you all can give it some time. And again, I don't it doesn't have to be a necessarily a coordinated list. I think people just send me sort of your top couple of things and and I'm sure there's gonna be overlap and then I'll just sort of sort it and I'll I'll share with you what we came up with if and I can just if people wanna give feedback before I meet with her, I'll try to like circulate what's been presented to me so far or the right. things that I planned on talking about and we can go from there. I don't think this has to be like a big mm -hmm. You know, because this is really, really for staff, but I obviously respect all of your thoughts and input. So, I mean, just first of all, Stephanie, I'm really happy that you're having this opportunity. That's awesome. Um, I think something that's always on my mind is all of this work has to be implemented at the local level and it's hard for local municipalities to staff up enough people to do this work. And so what can the state do to make it easier for the local municipalities to implement things 
like it would be great to have state level I don't know it just feels like there's efficiencies there that could be gained that we're not realizing by having each town have to figure out their own inventory and their own dashboard and then their own programs and all the grants and like so it just feels like what could the state do to make it so that towns don't have to the towns can actually do this stuff and particularly towns that don't have a ton of staff dedicated to this. Yeah. And trust me as a department of one. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of my topics. Yeah. Is the challenge of, and, and honestly, I mean, even communities that do have a little bit more staffing, it's still a huge challenge. The implementation piece is beyond ridiculous. Like, I, I mean, I, and that's why I get frustrated when people are saying, why isn't this happening tomorrow? It's like, because it is so complicated. And I will tell you, just as a quick example, um, we so we have been awarded some um, EECBG funding, which is the um, Energy Efficiency uh, Community Block Grant funding. Um, I think I, I reported on this a while ago that it's like seventy six thousand dollars, and we were going to try to put it towards um, some kind of weatherization projects within like buildings that we're trying to move towards decarbonization goals. But in the end, I think we're looking to purchase an electric vehicle for our facilities manager. Um, he's already got that sort of on his capital list. And I think we're going to just do that because honestly, I started looking into the rabbit hole of what you have to go through just to get this funding. And there are literally, it says, oh, you only have to sort of go through these two pathways. Well, those two pathways include other requirements. So in the end, there's actually eight sort of separate documents and pathways that you have to follow just to sort of get this funding and then report out on this funding. Um, this is a federal, this is federal funding. It's sort of distributed through states, but it's federal funding. It is so complicated and it is so laborious that it's just sometimes it's not even worth it that's what I mean like the time that it takes as a department of one to do something like this simple is really maddening and it's they're not all like that I will say that uh, you know a lot of the grants that I have gone for that we've been successful with have been because they're pretty straightforward like the mass evit program and getting electric vehicles and charging stations, you know, that's been a pretty straightforward process. Um, but we're also sort of at a capacity, at, at least for the municipality in terms of public charging stations, we can't just keep installing them because we're sort of, there are a lot of challenges in doing so. So um, it's not like, oh, we can just like develop this plan where we have, you know, charging on every block. We can't. It's not, the infrastructure doesn't support that right now. And I had a site visit today regarding, oh, that's something I forgot to report out. Um, we do have the, the level two charging stations that are coming in. There's two of them. They're gonna be in the CVS lot. Um, unfortunately, I think they are single port, not double port as I had uh, uh, thought they were going to be. Um, but, you know, again, there's, there's gonna be challenges in even getting some of the equipment because everybody in the entire country is all trying to get some of the same equipment and the same parts. And there's just not only this glut of not having sufficient infrastructure to support all of this additional electricity needs and demand, but there's also a challenge of getting the parts and equipment because there's so much of a spike in the need because everyone's trying to do the same thing. So this is another challenge I think that we're facing that I would love to bring up with Melissa Hoffer is like, we have everybody trying to do the same thing and how are we like, access to you know supply and demand that is a huge challenge right now and it's becoming even more so so anyway i think i might have got off on a little tangent oh, there but yeah. but <laughs> no it's super important and i think there's ways i think there's things the state could do to help alleviate some of that yeah instead okay. of having each individual person in each individual town figure out all these systems and do it like what could they do more wholesale so anyway i'm sure yeah um be interested to get a report back from that meeting yeah i'd be happy to share and thank you for my little rant <laughs> <laughs> all right great thank you stephanie as always um lots of exciting things happening i'm really pretty happy about all this <laughs> bright spot in the middle of a lot of really awful things going on in the world um all right, ECAC member updates. Any other updates? Let's 
Okay. Nothing there. How about items for the next agenda? Or Don, did you have something? Nope. Okay, so items for the next agenda. We mentioned a couple of things along the way. Um, what were they? Anyone remember? Uh, one of them was um, uh, adding the community climate workshop decarbonization goals report from Dawn. Right, right. That's one. Um, I don't think there was like another agenda item. There were just certain follow up. Yes, things. follow up questions but, on some of the existing items, right? Yep. So, some so. of which I'm responsible for. So, but I don't think there was like an actual agenda, other agenda item other than that one. Right. If there's anything we should be doing at this point, Stephanie, you know, I know we're expected to do outreach around CCA. If there's something specific we should be doing, like planning a you know, webinar or standing on a street corner with signs or, <laughs> you know, um, let us know. I don't know if that should be an agenda item, but if there's something that you particularly need us to do other than just reaching out to our networks. I, when that time comes, I will definitely include it as an agenda item, but I don't think that um, not there yet. we're not there yet. You know, we're still like, we, you know, literally just signed the contract. And so there are certain kind of official um, community sessions that we have to hold that are, yes. that we schedule with the consultant, you know, and those will, you know, you'll be notified about when those are, but you know, there may be separate things you all want to do. Um, and that we'll have to, I'll have to discuss with the consultant as to what those things are. It's very, the one thing about the outreach around this effort is that it, the DPU is very, very persnickety about the language that's used in doing the outreach. Mm -hmm. And again, because people are automatically opted in their own basic service. So they really want to, you know, there are things like we have to ensure that people know this is not a guarantee of savings. Um, you know, so right. renewable content isn't like, you know, expressly guaranteed. It's just, there's, there's just things that we can and can't say. So that's all. Okay. All right, good. So Laura has her hand up. Yeah. Oh, Laura, go ahead. Sorry, didn't see you. Um, yeah, I was wondering if now if it is it the time now to start thinking about like town manager goals or annual reports. That just struck me as things that I feel like we did last summer. That does sound familiar. Was your, I, I seem to recall that your annual report was submitted in like December. Is it that was, right? Or was it, I thought it was December, but we could always double check. We didn't report on it until much later than we wanted to. I think we ended up reporting in like October or something like that, but we submitted it much earlier. I have to look back at my calendar. Yeah, I knew there was like a goal. <laughs> I remember having a goal to do it in earlier and I feel like we did do it a little bit earlier last year but maybe I'm wrong but I know the other times we weren't able to meet that goal and we definitely submitted it in December but anyway yeah I think we should we, talk about the, that the fiscal year is over so I think we can start working on it um probably. we could add that to the agenda yeah, fairly soon yes and I will try to look back at my notes from last year this will be the I, I took over that from, um, Basu. yeah, from Basu. Basu. he did most of the work on that. So I don't recall offhand what we did, but I do have notes. So I will look back at that and try to do something about it. I think he did also did a draft report so that it could be edited. Yep. Um, and, and that was his, me. so I think to make it easier for moving forward, I think he had structured it so that we could just uh, easily amend it. Got to write a report. <laughs> this is the part of chairing that I hate. <laughs> Writing annual reports. Okay, I will try to put together some sort of an annual report. Um, I think it wasn't all on 
just the chair last time. I think if you recall, he asked certain people who worked on cer certain initiatives. Right. Um, the downside is that we don't have Dwayne and Jesse who worked on certain things to be contributing to that, but it's not all on you, Lori. I certainly contribute some, and okay. I think other members can contribute as well. It's not all on you. All right, I will start looking back at that and we'll see if we can pull something together. I might even reach out to to Jesse and um, and Dwayne and see if they'd be willing to. Um, I mean, Dwayne in particular, uh, Steve, you know, Steve and Dwayne did a lot with the solar bylaw just, and maybe, maybe Dwayne would be willing to write a little summary of that effort. Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, I think we don't need to put as much effort into it as we have in past years. Like, I don't think it gets read, particularly yeah. by a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I do think it's a great opportunity for us to summarize what we've done and a great opportunity for Stephanie in particular to summarize all the great work she's done. Yeah. Um, but I think we can... Previous versions, I think previous members of the committee have wanted to put a bunch of stuff in there that I don't think we necessarily need. To put in so i think we could simplify it yeah when i've done this sort of thing with other committees in the past it's usually just a uh almost a bullet list of what has been accomplished and maybe a little bit about some of the some highlights exactly um, yeah i think that's what we can do and if we want to talk about future work like that's where i think that starts to become yeah. pretty aligned with the town manager goals which is a different process so yeah right. So we're sort of behind, aren't we? Because the when we say town manager goals, are we talking fiscal year or we're talking fiscal year, we missed our window, right? Or are we talking calendar year? Mm, no, I don't know. That would be a question for, I don't, I think it's calendar. I, I, I feel like, because the counselors start in January. So I feel like it is calendar year. Based it's calendar year because it. that's when they submit their goals. And I think that's why you were, I, I'm having my time periods overlap because I think you all tried to get information before the council submitted their goals, which I think are in December so that they kick off the calendar right. year. So that would make sense as to why you were starting in the summer to get your recommendations in okay good yeah. good yeah i think we were earlier last year because i remember there was a very long wait between when we wanted to present it we wanted to present it sometime over the summer and we ended up doing it much later um, yeah and i think was, the manager goals we're trying to get ahead of their process so they have all of our yeah ideas while they feed them into their decision making and some make it and some don't right right Okay, so I will start thinking about that. I may send an email to specific folks to ask for some input. Um, and Stephanie, we can talk about this next time we meet too. Um, which maybe should be sooner rather than later because I'm I'm on vacation from the 21st to the 31st. So I can still, I think, do we have a- We can do this offline, let's yeah. connect. I'm, I'm actually gonna be gone tomorrow through Monday. Okay. So, so uh, when is our next meeting? So remind me, I have it on my calendar, but just let's leave with that. On the 31st. On the 31st. Of this month in two weeks. All right, I'll be, I will be back by then. Okay. Is everybody, we should ensure that we have a quorum? We have a quorum for the 31st? 31st. I'll, I'll be here. Okay. Um, okay. Stephanie, I won't be here for the meeting after that. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna be in France, so. Okay. So everybody so that's gets the first. That's uh August 14th. Yep. Right, right? Yeah. Actually, I won't be here either for that meeting. Okay. We Let's deal with that, that next. next okay. Time. Yeah, we'll deal with that. All right. Um dog is telling me it's time for dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh I think we're at the end of our agenda, except for um, attendee comments, and I don't think public comments, and I don't think there are any attendees. So with that, I think the next thing is adjourn, yes? Yes. So see you all on the 31st.
Hey, everybody stay safe if you're going anywhere right now. Yeah, I'm going anywhere right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Talk yeah. to you later. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.